Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I love to connect with people around the world on Truth Talk. Um, today we are talking with um, Carol Boston. She's the queen of reframe. And, you know, I love to bring in people who I know is going to bless you, to help you kind of um, to grow. Uh, with, with Truth Talk, we are just sitting at the table with one another and we are taking the mask off. We're talking about the things that happen behind the scenes, what has helped us um be successful? How do we overcome challenges? And what are the things that inspire us and push us forward? Um, many people have had to pivot in this time. And so um, I love Carol. She is in another program with me and we be, we fastly become friends and have learned working together. And I just knew that she would bless you guys. I love her heart. And she has some amazing things that she does with leaders and and so, um, and whether, you know, that be we a leader of our business or a leader of our home or a leader of the group, our mindset and how we think um, is so important to help us get and reach our God-sized goals. So today I would like to just uh, welcome you, Carol um, Boston. Where are you coming to us from? Uh, just outside of beautiful, sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Ah, I love it. Love it. Um, we've been looking at, there's been some good flight prices to get to Florida, but you know, we're yep. kind of looking at what can we do um, here coming up. So um, you are known as the queen of reframe. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get that um, beautiful title? It's a, it's an interesting story. I actually, I'm, I'm the reluctant entrepreneur. So I, uh, I actually had uh, 26 and a half years, very successfully in sales for fortune 100 companies, ATT Sprint and paychecks, you know, I mean, Melanie, I had walked across the stage, gotten the award, sold over $70 million in revenue. I thought I had it made right until the day I got that call and they told me they were cutting my territory by 80%. I'm like 80%. I've been building this territory for six and a half years. He didn't have to tell me twice. I thought they were setting me up to fail. So a friend of mine, now I love, I was a weird salesperson because I love structure and I'm a, I'm a rule follower, which is not true for most salespeople, right? So they loved me in corporate America too, or so I thought until this happened. Now, a friend of mine whispered in my ear about an opportunity with this very small company. I thought, well, I don't know what I don't know. So off I went, right? They interviewed me twice. They hired me. They doubled my base salary plus commissions. They gave me a director title, never had one of those. I was like, oh, I could just see the potential. So six weeks into this new job, I was on vacation. I had negotiated it in my contract up front. I was in beautiful. I don't know if I told you, but have you ever been to Albuquerque, New Mexico for the world's largest hot air balloon festival? I have not, but actually my sister-in-law lives there. So Gwendolyn, if you're listening, hello, hello. But no, tell me all about it. It's, it's, I mean, just think about the sunrise ascension is incredible. It's dark. It's going to be chilly. It's in early October um, and they're blowing up all the balloons. They talk to you. They tell you what they're doing. And then just at sunrise, they have the, what they call the Ascension. And it's hundreds of balloons of all sizes and shapes and colors. It's incredible, you know, and, and against a blue sky and they have nighttime liftoffs. Anyway, this coming year is the 50th anniversary. My goal is to be there for the 50th anniversary. I think it's usually around the first week of October. I haven't checked. But there we were on vacation, having a great time. Now, at the time, I was doing what I thought a good employee should do, right? I was staying in touch with my boss, the CEO, on vacation. Now, I don't advocate that anymore. <laughs> I tell my clients, look, when you're on vacation, you're on vacation, right? Um, but I was doing the best I could with what I knew at the time. Um, I got an email from him asking my opinion on something. And so I replied right back. And I waited. And I waited because... He usually replies back right away. Now, I'm not thinking anything's wrong. We go off. We enjoy our day. We come home that night. We've had, then I've had a nice dinner and ding, there goes my phone. Now it's been 12 hours since I sent this email. And it was like, ding, Carol Boston, you've got mail. And here's what it said. It said, Carol, comma, that's what you really think. And it had five question marks behind it. And then it said, don't bother coming in this office on Monday when your vacation is over. You're done here. So what? I just got fired in an email, <laughs> right? For an opinion I was asked for. Now, one of the things I help my clients do is learn how to advocate for themselves. And I learned that from the fact that I didn't do it. I didn't go advocate for myself for this job. Florida is a no fault state. I mean, you can get fired for anything. They don't have to tell you. Any, I just accepted that I got fired. Um, so I really, you know, I help women know their value, 
own their power and advocate for themselves, right? So they can rise up and become the lioness leaders they were created to be. And I work with a few good men to help them become the lion leaders they were created to be. So I came back to South Florida. I had an interview the very next day. For so many months, I can't even begin to tell you. I mean, I depleted my 401k looking for a job because what? That's all I could see. I had labeled myself from my past as I'm a corporate salesperson. That's all I could see. So there I was many months into this process, you know, investing tons of dollars. And in my prayer time, I said, God, <laughs> I really did kind of yell at time because I was at that point. Right. And I'm like, look, God, you made me, you know, I'm not cut out to own my own business. I do not want to be an entrepreneur. You've got to help me find a good job. And literally two weeks to the day from that prayer, I got an email out of the blue from a woman I met one time out of town at a conference. And guess what it did? She gifted me a $3,500 ticket to go to Los Angeles to study at Guerrilla Business School. Now, I tell people that my God has a sense of humor because Guerrilla Business School was a foundational school for entrepreneurs. And so I figured, I don't know what I don't know. And what I'm doing isn't working. And I thought it was also ironic that I could sell $70 million worth of business for somebody else. And I couldn't close a deal to get myself a job. Well, isn't that, you know, when you look at that, um, God works in ways, I would say um, man's way and God's way are not the same, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. we would think, like, you know, we think like, this is how I need to go, or this is the direction I need to go. And it's really true when you say God has a funny sense of humor, because, you know, sometimes we got to be open. We've got to be open to where God is calling us. And it may not look like what we want it to look like. Mm -hmm. Or it may not come wrapped in the package that we want it to look like. So I think that that, you know, um, how wonderful that you were gifted that for the foundation of where you were to go and mm -hmm. um, how you have been able to take something that was such a surprise to yes. bless many people and to change it to where you are right now. So talk to us a little bit about like your the mindset that you had you went through, um, because many people, I think, right now are in the time where they have lost their jobs or they may have received that email, right? Yeah. So people are working from home or businesses have shut down. Um, how did you shift and get to actually stepping in to doing what you're doing now with your mindset? Okay. Well, I went, to, I went to Los Angeles to Gorilla mm -hmm. Business School. And the first thing I learned is you can't read the label when you're inside a jar and we're all in a jar. That's gonna be the title of my next book. It'll be out at the end of this year, right? It's powerful, but it's so true. I was in a jar before, right? I'm a corporate salesperson, that's all I could see. <clears throat> the next thing I learned was about empowering questions and I was amazed at them and I was determined to master them. This was in May of 2015. Now, one of the reasons I'm now known as the queen of reframe and how I was able to reframe what I went through was beginning to ma master these questions. Empowering questions allow you to reframe. And if you're out there and you're, you're challenged right now, I want you to think about this. They allow you to reframe from focusing on what isn't working and they open you to opportunities you've never even considered. When you put these out to the universe, the caveat is you are not to try to sit around and figure out the answer. You're telling God and the universe, I am open to hearing, seeing, saying, or doing something I've never thought of before. They create Oprah, what I call Oprah aha moments, right? They allow you to be curious. They cause you to ponder and to wonder. And I have seen some amazing transformations from my clients who are willing to adapt this and do it, right? So I'll give your, your group, your community a freebie here. This is the most powerful of all empowering questions. And when I learned this, this is one of the things that helped me with my mindset. And it's what else is possible? What else is possible? And remember, you're not trying to figure it out. That amazing question will open doors that might surprise you. And so as I began to master these questions and work through them, let me tell you real candidly, from May of 2015 to the fall of 2017, I still held on to three products, services, if you will, that I was trying to sell into corporate America. Why was I doing that? I had two coaching certifications. I'd invested all this money in myself because it was familiar. Right. And oftentimes we will hold on to what is familiar, even when it's not comfortable. And then I learned something very important. I actually learned this from Lisa Nichols. I give her the credit. 
I learned there's a huge difference between being committed and being convicted, mm -hmm. right? Because people decommit every day, don't they? They say, I'm committed to this marriage for life until the day they're not, right? Or I'm committed to, to losing this 20 pounds and then it becomes next Monday, next month, next year. But when you're convicted, you won't rest until you get it done. And the key thing is your conviction and your comfort and your convenience don't live on the same block. They're not even in the same zip code. So we have to be willing to get uncomfortable to grow. And when I learned that, I let go of those three services and I became all in. I mean, I had plan A, that's it. I'm all in to stepping up and becoming a coach. And that's how I got started um, to really, to really reframe that was what else is possible and reframing that nothing happens to me, nothing, everything happens for me. You know, and that is so beautiful. I, I mean, I, it's so true. Like what else is possible? And I, and I also just feel like this is kind of what um, was on my heart right now that I just want to say is sure. that, you know, when we think sometimes we're thinking like, what else is possible for me? Or why am I in this situation? But I really believe that God aligns us with people to open doors for other people. I mean, one of my favorite books is The Go-Giver. If you've never read it, if never read it, it's a, just one of the easiest reads. But I often tell people about it and I've given many, many copies of it away. And it's just about how, you know, um, somebody rescinds a referral. A guy can't really help somebody. And he says, I really can't do that for you, but this person can. And he gives away one of the biggest, you know, which could really help him meet his quote at the end. And then the story goes on to tell you what comes of that. But I really feel like sometimes we meet people and if we were to, it's to slow down or to think like, not what is in it for me, but what is possible for this person or what is it possible for this relationship yeah. and how can we possibly work together or who, how could I help them or who could I introduce them to? And so I really feel like that for anybody who's listening right now to just, I want to challenge you. Like if somebody is putting, if God is putting somebody on your heart right now and you're thinking of somebody that you can introduce or that Carol could possibly help with, you know, with their mindset or different things or their leadership as you learn more about what she does. I want, I mean, I want you guys definitely to, to connect with Carol because she, she's just, as you can see, I mean, we can, we've just talked for hours and hours. There's so much. It's like, what can we even share with you today? But on my heart, I'm really feeling right now, like, you know, we may be asking ourselves what else is possible here and, and trying to figure out what it is. But I'm thinking, I'm sensing that there are people now that could open the doors for somebody else and just say, I'd like to introduce you to this person and you can have a conversation to see what else is possible for you guys in that relationship. Um, because, you know, we are often so close together with people and we just don't even know who we're in the room with. Mm. We don't yes. even know how we can help one another because we don't know what question to ask or we don't, um, we don't know where we're at. And also sometimes I want to say, we don't have the God confidence to go through mm -hmm. and, and say, this is what I need and to walk bigger and play bigger by faith. So um, I know that you have probably had some huge challenges along the way in, in that. So um, I love that you, you know, you're saying like, what else is possible? What are some of the, the things that have really helped you um, when you're when you're asking yourself that question, what else is possible? Because you have worked with some of the very largest corporations and you've gotten in those doors. So yeah. how have you what are some ways that you've you know, you've handled that or addressed that to just um, not be held back? You used a word earlier. Uh, you said God confidence. Mm -hmm. And if anybody comes to my page, my show is called The Courage to Confidence Corner. And. I called it that, right? Courage to Confidence Corner um, for the three C's. And it's about with Carol, but all you really need to have is just a little sliver of courage to take that next step. Because I believe that God only gave us a lamplight for our feet because all we need to do is take the next step and trust in the process. And I'll be really candid and tell you, if a few years ago, God had showed me the whole picture, I would have probably quit, right? Because there's no way I could have fathomed that I would have had the strength and the wherewithal to even be here right now. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so when you're asking what else is possible, it isn't. Let me tell you, folks, it's not just when you think you have a negative situation. I told one of my clients, I don't care if you win $10 million in the lottery tomorrow. First thing you do, you celebrate like crazy. And then you go, hmm, I just won $10 million. What else is possible? That's right. right. 
because you just never know. And that's what I love about what you do. And one of the reasons I wanted to be on your show, right? You're helping people reach their God-sized goals. And oftentimes people won't even step into it for fear that it's too big or that they don't have it or not trusting that God's going to give us what we need just for today. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that you and I connected when we did at the time we did. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the story of where I'm at. Cause I've, I've, I told you I was a reluctant entrepreneur. I've been challenged. I've been challenged. Um, you had mentioned something about, um, I don't want to get off track, but you mentioned about, was there a book that I was reading earlier today? Mm -hmm. And there's a couple that I wanted to mention, but one of them um, I received not too long ago, and it's called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. And I started reading this book. And what do you think the first thing I did is, okay, God, why didn't you send me this book three years ago? And I typically rarely use the word why, because I get my clients to take why out of our vocabulary. Right. And I immediately said, okay, I don't want to know why. What's in it for me now? What's the lesson now? I went right back to trusting the process. Because when we question why, or when you're having a conversation, we're talking about mindset and we're talking about leadership. And let's talk about the fact that we create as we speak. We create as we speak. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're not even aware of that. Quick example of that was back in August of 2018. I gave my very first workshop at Kaiser University. I don't know if I told you this story. And fast forward from August 2nd of 2018 to July 30th of 2019 was when I sold my home, my house of 26 years I thought I was going to live in forever. And I had another house I was going to rent. I was taking money out to pay down some debt, to try to grow this business, um, do what I needed to do. And two weeks before the closing of my house, the people I was going to rent from said, yeah, we changed our mind. I was like, what? Now I want you to think about this, Melanie. I would have told you that I love, I do, and I still do like structure. And that's been a challenge for me, creating my own structure. But I loved routine, right? And I loved being settled. I love stability. That's why I stayed in that house for 26 years, thought I'd stay forever. God saw fit that in less than nine months, I had to move six times, six times. And every time I kept saying, what's the lesson? And people would ask me, I'll be honest, I walked into one of the, one of the was very difficult. The people above me were selling drugs. I never, I couldn't sleep there. It was really bad in a very nice neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale of all places. Obviously I wasn't supposed to be there. And uh, I walked into, uh, I'm on the board of the women's executive club and I walked into a board meeting. This was in January of last year. And the president literally looked me up and down and said, you look like hell. And I said, well, thank you. I haven't slept in two or three days, but okay. And she said to me, how are you managing in all of this chaos? And I stood there and I looked at her and I said, you know, I've never once called it chaos. I said, I just figure I'm still in God's personal development program <laughs> and there's stuff I have to learn. <laughs> and I learned that I am highly adaptable and flexible. I would have not told you that I was flexible before. Right. So Stephen Furtick was speaking not too long ago, and it really impacted me for a lot of what I'm going through. And he said, often God will allow chaos and disruption all around the outside of you so he can strengthen your core. And I truly trust that that's what I'm going through. You even said to me that I am probably not aware of the level that I'm supposed to step into. You, you said that. I was like, I hadn't even thought about that. Like, I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did think that. I don't know if I answered your question because, you know me, I can talk about a lot of things, but mindset is so key. But here's what your community needs to know. There's power in choice. Only when you own that you're choosing, can you then choose differently. So if you get up today or you got up yesterday or you get up tomorrow and you have a negative mindset, you are choosing that. And only when you say, okay, I own that I'm choosing this, can you then make a different choice? Will you need help? Will you need some things to do to change habits? Absolutely. That takes me to the other book that I'm reading. Now, I said I wasn't going to buy another book. Somehow I bought this book. And Melanie, in the last three weeks since I got this book, three times, it's come up with two of my clients and one other person. It just, it had to happen. So one of the things in his book, I will tell you, if there's, if you have a habit 
that you would like to adopt. Maybe you want to get consistent at flossing your teeth. Start with something little. Here's what you do. And I want you to do three of these. And you can PM me if you have if you struggle with it. You can PM me with questions, or really, I want you to PM with PM me or DM me, private message, because I know you're gonna, it's gonna work, because it's working for me. Okay. Before I moved out of my house, I was consistent. I'd been in a car wreck several years ago. I was consistent every morning about doing all the stretches for my back in my bed before I got up and started my day. In all of this moving and everything, I am so inconsistent, and I can tell. So last week I'm reading this book and I said, oh, I can do this. So here's what you do. You write down this statement after I blank. And that blank is something that you already do consistently without thinking. So what I wrote down was after I plug in the coffee pot, I will get back in bed and stretch as long as the coffee's percolating. Guess what? I haven't missed a day in seven days. I haven't missed a day. But you want it to be something simple and something easy. And that will begin. So if you're challenged, I will tell you this, I was in a very toxic relationship and there were times when I would stay, get up out of bed in the dark, I'm an early riser. And back then I was rising even earlier just from the stress and, and the challenges. And I would stand there in the dark and I would say, I love my life. I love my life. Sometimes I had to say it a lot of times if she had been very abusive verbally the night before, right? But I didn't leave that room in the dark until I said, I love my life. And, and what can I draw into it to love it even more? So I was working to come from a place of gratitude and then grow the gratitude, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't I, know. Did I answer your question? <laughs> you, okay. So, so everybody's going to want to know, what is this book? The, the second book that you're reading, what's that um, book called? It's called Tiny Habits oh, right. Tiny. By, by B. J. Fogg, F-O-G-G. -G. It's right here. And I got to tell you, it's going to take me, it's going to take you a while to get through this because he gives you extra, uh, where's my camera? Tiny Habits. And it says the small changes, the, the small changes that change everything. Well, we're going to put some links down below, you guys. So just so you know, look down below. We'll put a, a direct link into those two books. We want to make sure that you contact with Carol across social media. But before we let you go, um, I wanted to ask you because something exciting just happened. Yeah. And you became an international bestseller yourself with the book compilation that you're in. So tell us about that book so that we can support and celebrate you. Awesome. I appreciate that. It's called Women who boss up secrets from women who are owning their health, their wealth and their wellness to create a lifestyle that they love. And I have been blessed to be with some amazing women. We just finished our three day uh, book tour summit yesterday. And I got to tell you, Melanie, I ran my own summit last year and I learned from somebody who's supposed to be one of the best. This was unlike, I wish I had known to run my summit like this. It was phenomenal, really, truly phenomenal what she did. And, and what she invested in. But I didn't get to listen to all of the ladies. I will because I'll get the replays. But if you want all these replays, just reach out to me and I'll let you know how you can get them. I listened to one lady that I'm going to introduce you to right after we get off this call. Her story will almost bring you to tears and how she's turned it around to be of service to other people. Incredible. Some things that, you know, oftentimes we forget. I'm going to be candid. I've lived through rape back in college. I lived through attempted murder two years later. I've done my work in therapy. I can talk about it. It doesn't bring draw any emotion or any triggers for me. But I think sometimes, especially as women, we forget to give ourselves credit for how far we've come. Yeah. Right. So if you're out there, I want, I'm going to challenge you. Get out a piece of paper and I want you to start writing down at least 50 things, 50 that's not a lot for a whole lifetime. 50 things that you can celebrate about you, mm -hmm. right? One of the things I do with my clients, and I'm going to get back to the book, but one of the things I do with my clients is we redefine the word success. Success is in the attempt. It is not in the end result. When I was in corporate America, they'd say, we'll celebrate when you make your quota at the end of the year, Carol. And I'd be like, no, that doesn't work. And my clients learn that success is in the attempt without judgment. You got to write that down. It's without judgment. You don't go, Ugh, that was terrible or that was bad. You go, hmm, let's get curious. What worked and what didn't? 
We celebrate the fact that we took action because guess what we get to do now? It gets us into another action and we mid course correct. Yeah. Makes sense. So in this book, if you want to get to know more about me, you will definitely hear more about my story. Um, my chapter is uh, about leadership, how to turn small steps into giant leaps. Um, it's at, that was actually the first talk that I gave inside American Express last year into corporate America. But she's doing a series of these books. She's got one coming out, Women Who Boss Up Women of Color, when, Women Who Boss Up Asian Women. As a matter of fact, yesterday, the guest speaker was Dee Dee Wong. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dee Dee Wong. Have you heard of her? Yeah. Woman on fire, right? She was our guest speaker yesterday. She's giving us a bonus meeting tomorrow. Her movie just came out on Impact TV today. I was trying to watch it in between meetings. I was like, oh, I don't have two and a half hours. I thought, I wish I was in that movie. The transformation is incredible, right? And she tells a story like a lot of us. I can't speak for everybody, but I didn't have a good relationship with my mother. Nothing I did was good enough. The clothes I wore wasn't good enough. My hair was too short. It was, and I listened to this woman and I was so connected with her story, but she does the, the introduction to the book. So if for nothing else, you want to get the book just to get the introduction, but I'm excited. Um, it's, it has spurred me on. Like I said, I'm going to do my own book. Uh, you can't read the label when you're inside a jar and we're all in a jar, but here's the thing. I can read your label and I help my clients get a new label. I help them let go of the story of who they are from what happened in their past and they step into who they were created to be, mm -hmm. right? Because it's biblical. God says you must believe and then you see, and you must call things that aren't as though they are. And you actually asked me earlier, I, I don't know how much time we have, but um, you asked me earlier about a Bible verse that was sticking out to me recently. Is that how you worded it? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, most of the time I always ask. So, you, we, we prepare. I always like to have my guests prepare because sometimes if I don't, people can get stumped or it's happened to me. And so I always like to like give them a little opportunity to think about it. Just let you guys know behind the scenes. So if you get to come on here, no, but I always like to ask people because I believe um, leaders are readers, right? But yeah. also I believe the words we speak are so powerful. And I believe no words that we can speak more over our life than is the word of God and the word yeah. of Christ. And it's such a big book. And so I always like to know, like, what is one verse that speaks to you or has been very powerful to you in your life? So, yeah. So what verse is that that you want to share with us today? It's James 3, 8. Yes. And what does it say? No man can tame the tongue. No man can tame the tongue. And just like huge ships are moved by small rudders, huge forest fires, Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I don't know who is knocking on my door. Hold on. I'm so, so sorry. Well, you know, as she goes and as she does that, it is so true. In James 3, it talks about no man can tame, can tame the tongue. And we have the ability to, you know, to bring that to Christ if you're struggling with that. So go ahead, Carol. Tell us what you're going to say about that. I apologize. I was not expecting that. Um, so we have to be aware that even little words can make a huge difference. And when I said earlier that we create as we speak, that talk that I gave, that workshop at Kaiser, are you ready? The title of it was Leadership, colon, Navigating a Successful Course in the Winds of Change. And then fast forward one year later, and all of a sudden, that's exactly what I've been having to do. I've now moved seven times in 16 months. I just moved this weekend, right? Because my other room had mold and it was making me sick. It's like, okay, maybe I'm just supposed to be in a different building for a new viewpoint, right? And that's how I choose to look at it. But be careful as you speak, because we all know that the tongue is a double-edged sword and no man tames it. But when you learn empowering questions, empowering questions allow you to take the emotion out of a conversation, which is powerful, right? And that's why an empowering question never, ever, ever, this is a writer downer for you. It never starts with the word why, ever. Because why brings in defensiveness, which brings in the ego, which brings in emotions. And when emotions go up, intelligence goes down. It's true for every human being. And, and be aware, it's not, just, it's not just when you think you're angry and you said something you didn't mean out of anger. It can happen when you're really happy, too, when your emotions get out of control. So it's both sides of the coin. So that I keep that in front of me. And actually, it spoke to me this morning, and I thought of you, Melanie, because I thought, ooh, that could be a good one for my thing we're working on, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, 
I love it because there's so, you know, um, I interviewed Julie um, Mudell last week and the, the verse that she brought in, I was like, you know, you read over it, but um, sometimes you, you read them in a story or you don't really see. And then it's like, it's so amazing how you can see how people are applying it to life or how we can apply it to business or, you know, um, to just to bring us hope, right? Mm. The power in it. And so I just love that, that aspect. And, you know, I think it's kind of funny because you're like, I wasn't expecting that so many times, right? Like that's, this is kind of the truth talk. There are so many times in life that we're not expecting what is to come, but it's how we are going to handle it and how we are going to face it and how our mindset and how we're going to take it to God and listen to where he's calling us yes. that the result is what's going to happen. And I, you know, I just, you, you've shared so many amazing, um, you know, just truth. It's, it's the successes, you know, not in the, in the result, it's in getting going in the process. Right. Yeah. How many of you out there needed to hear that today? It's not about failure. Right. I mean, so, so many people fail, but the only way that they are moving, they're learning quicker, faster from their failures is how they're getting to the next step. So was there something else that you wanted to share, Carol? Well, you just made me, I don't know, I can share all day. <laughs> Do you, know, talking, right? <laughs> you made me think of this book, Tiny Habits, um, because often we think if I just had the motivation, you know, if I just had the motivation, right? Here's the thing. You can, this is so powerful for my clients. Confidence is not a feeling. That's a writer down. Confidence is a decision to act because you can act your way into feeling but you cannot feel your way into action. And he talks about motivation and how we give motivation way too much credit because motivation is tied to our emotions, which are very fickle. And we often overestimate our motivation. How many times have you, you know, I don't know, joined a network marketing group and ah, and then you drop out. All right. Or, and I drop out and he teaches and, and you're going to be one of my guinea pigs, Melanie, because the next exercise is I have to be able to teach this model of motivation versus ability that get you over the action line to take action. And I have to be able to teach it to you without the script. So I'm learning, but we have to get to a certain point and that's how we can do what we want to do. And you take these little steps and you celebrate these little steps because God honors what we celebrate. Well, and um, I, with my clients, I often say, what can we celebrate for you for, or because what gets celebrated gets repeated, right? So okay. those little steps um, that we're doing as we celebrate those, whether it's like, I drank all my water today, or I, I picked up the phone and I called that person that I didn't want to, didn't, you know, um, I, I held the event, I, could, I followed through, um, whatever it is, whatever we celebrate gets repeated. And I think as entrepreneurs, um, and even, you know, I like to work with Christian entrepreneurs, but because we are walking bigger by faith, but whether you're what, whatever the title you want to give yourself as an entrepreneur, um, a lot of times people don't cannot relate to us. And, you know, they don't really know. They know we're working. They know we're doing things. But a lot of times our family and friends, they don't get it. They don't get the consistency, the um, the the classes that we're taking, the systems that we're learning, the mm -hmm. partnerships that we're trying to form for our bigger goal. Exactly. And um, I'm going to give Lisa Cre Nichols credit for this one again. Oftentimes, like you said, we're looking for our family or our close friends to be our biggest supporters. And oftentimes they're not, whether they're scared for us, they've never owned a business and they don't know what to do. They're afraid we're going to fail. And she says, here's the thing. God didn't give your dream or your vision to them. He gave it to you. It's your job to surround yourself with the people that are going to lift you up and support you. I mean, I work with my clients in five areas. And the last one I call a 360 degree view. Who's in the game with you? Mm -hmm. right? Who's on your team? And sometimes someone's a good team member only for a short time, right? They're not necessarily a permanent team member, but you have to be willing to let go and trust. I don't know if I shared this with you, but about a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, I had to end a 32 year friendship. First friend I ever made here, mm. but I knew it had to be done. That person did not belong in my circle. And the cliche is right. You become the average of the five people you hang around with most. So with my clients and with myself, it's okay. Who are we hanging around with the most? That's why I want to hang with you. 
Yeah. Well, and, well, and it's so <laughs> funny because we never really talked about this, but you're, you know, you're, you're talking about Lisa's stuff and sharing some of Lisa Nichols' stuff. And you guys, I just want to say, if you don't know who Lisa is and you haven't followed her, go and follow her. She is a very um, amazing woman. Um, she has a, a wonderful story. She has um, impacted a lot of lives. She's impacted my life and changed my life. Um, but she is a beautiful speaker. So, you know, and she does a lot of great YouTube channels. We're on YouTube today and we're on Facebook. So you can follow her on whatever social media platform is great. I think it's really great to give honor to where honors do. I have worked with Lisa for probably for probably five or six years now. Oh, and wow. this is what, um, you know, in one form or another. And so what I want to say to that is, too, is that, you know, um, I want to thank my friend Kathy because I would have never really known about Lisa um, had not Kathy been in a program and she had a, a free ticket to bless somebody. Mm. How many times are you in, uh, this is just speaking to me because we're talking about opening the doors that, you know, you're in a, at an event and, or a program and you could invite somebody, but you don't necessarily want to invite somebody because you don't want them to know your secret or you don't know that want them to know what you're doing. Mm. I know I was a photographer for 10 years and that was a real mindset shift for me. I have to tell you, because as a photographer, you didn't want people to know, um, what effects you were doing or where you were shooting at, because that's what made you unique. So when I was starting out and I was a young mom and I had my two babies, I would often ask, and many photographers didn't want to tell that secret. And I would always say, you know, or their trade secrets. And I would always, um, you know, um, at that time, I really, as a young mom, I compared myself. Like where, you know, how come I couldn't do that? Cause I, you know, I would try and, and build my business. And I got to where I had a very successful business um, and I sold that, but um, comparison is a thief of all joy. And what I really, when I left being um, a photographer and I started getting into the coaching industry nearly 20 years ago, I wanted to help people and I wanted to do for people the, what, what I wanted. And so my friend, Kathy, she said, I'm part of this program. And it was when Lisa Nichols was getting ready to launch her abundance now program. And she invited me to come in and sit behind. And we were part of that, that committee that got to read her book before it went out to be the program. And you are and the she, ambassadors. Uh, yeah. And, um, anyhow, so then I went to the program and I've just one step after another, just followed Lisa's port into my life. I've learned her, you know, how she speaks and different techniques. I've done personal development programs for her. So she's beautiful, you know, yes. and I think, I think it's really important to give honor to where honors do. But I say that to say, you know, if what Carol has said, make sure you go and follow Carol. Uh, if what she's saying, Lisa, you know, go, go follow Lisa, go get those books. If those books are giving tips or that new, the new best selling book that, that Carol's part of, you know, we have a lot of things at our availability and we, and a lot of times we make excuses by why we're not doing something or we don't have access. When I first started working with Lisa, I started working with her $28, her $28, dollar program. Right. And I've grown and done things from that. Yeah. Um, actually, I started because my friend um, Kathy, Kathy Kidd invited me. And so what I want to say to you is if you have a ticket and you can invite somebody, invite somebody, pause and listen and say, God, who is it that I can bless with this ticket? Or if you don't even have an extra ticket, but you're going, who is it that you can invite to go with you? Because it is so much funner to grow together. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's why we like a lot of the same things because we're growing together, Carol. We're mm -hmm. we're trying to create that momentum and that energy. And I love what you're doing. I love how you're speaking about leadership. I love your heart. I love your stories. I love um just the way that you're impacting lives. And, you know, our brain, our mindset, that stinking thinking is so important. And the ability that you have and the gift, God has given you such a gift. And that's why you're called the queen of reframe is to help people to take a look at that and say, how else can I look at this? What is the possibilities? What can I do differently? And we have to not be closed off because a lot of times we want to say, well, it just can't be done. Well, so I want to invite you you know, to connect with Carol and say, how else can it be done? Right. Mm -hmm. Because um, just as I work with people about igniting their God sized goals, I'm telling people to, you got to walk by faith, you know, because yeah. what is on paper may not make sense, but where God is calling you is so much bigger and you got to walk by faith to get there because then he gets all the glory. So go ahead. I was going to say, and trust that he will equip you to get there. And that's why I, you know, there, it would be easy for me to say, I should be further along. I should be making more money. Um, but I look back and I go, oh my gosh, I've learned this and this and this and this and this. Obviously it's in preparation for something. So I have no problem saying I'm in God's personal development program. 
right? And you were talking about, we have access to all these things at our fingertip. It reminds me of the story of the guy um, going across the, the land and he's stuck. There's no way to get there. He can't go over the mountain. There's no way to go around. It's too far. And he prays to God for help. And he falls asleep that night. And he wakes up the next morning and sitting up next to the rock is a shovel. And so what does the man do? He goes back and asks God for help. Well, the shovel's right there. What shovel do you have in your toolkit right now that you're not using? Mm -hmm. Right. Because we have it. Think about it. It's we're all guilty of it. Come on. We go to a conference, a seminar, we read a book, we listen to tape and we put it on the shelf. Everybody out there listening, you've done it right. Shelf learning. We want to help you get into action. And if you're looking for some help in doing that, come join my Facebook group. We're young. We're getting started. It's called Year With No Fear. We'll put the link in there for you. There's a great freebie in there for you. Five empowering questions to jumpstart your 2021. Um, I don't even know if you know, Melanie, that I put that in there. I'm going to go live and tell the group. I think you'd already joined before I put it in there. But five empowering questions to jumpstart your 2021 because you can create this year to be the best year you've ever had. Make the decision and then make the decision right. Well, Thank you so much, Carol, for being on here. We'll put the links down below of the books. We'll, we'll make sure you know how to connect with Carol. Um, if this um, spoke to somebody today, share it. If it made yeah. you think of somebody, share it. Uh, I know Danielle joined us. So hi, Danielle. It's so good to have you. If you guys have questions below, um, we're using a new platform today. So we're using StreamYard and we're going in many different places. So um, if we missed your question, we're going to come in and we're going to look and we're going to do the comment for you guys. And we'll we'll answer all of your questions. Um, really? If you're watching the replay, let us know that you caught the replay because I know I've got friends around the world and it's, it's you know, a lot of times it's nighttime when it's daytime here. So um, may I say one more thing? Yeah. Please feel free to put a challenge in the chat. If you don't, if you don't, or you can send it to me personally, but I will come back into this and answer your questions and give you a way to reframe it for free. Just put it in there. Give me one of your biggest challenges. We'll turn it around. Absolutely. Well, um, thank you so much, Carol. And um, it was so good. You guys go grab her book. Um, make sure you connect with her. And um, we will be back next week on Truth Talk at the Table with another person as we talk about what really is happening. We get real going behind the scenes and, and helping you move forward in your faith, your family, and your business. Be greater, love bigger, and have an amazing week. Thank you. Blessings to you.